Hi, welcome back. Today I'm continuing the process of converting my 1981 DeLorean into an electric vehicle. To catch you up quickly, I am taking everything out of a 2019 Chevrolet Bolt EV and swapping it into the DeLorean. The electric motor, the batteries, the drivetrain, the electronics, everything. And in a previous episode, I just did a complete rewire job, getting it back into a much better state than it was before, but there's still a lot of things that don't work in the car. And so I want to get those working. I want to be able to use the car as a daily driver. I want to be able to drive it through town. I want to be able to go and pick up groceries or go through a drive through things like that. And I can't do that right now because nothing in the doors works. I don't have door locks. I can't roll the windows up and down. I can't adjust the side mirrors. And since the DeLorean originally had most of that stuff and the Bolt EV has all that stuff, it should be as simple as connecting a few wires together and everything will just work. Foreshadowing, it doesn't. Today's video has a lot of everything. It has wiring uh, the doors. It has frustration, <laughs> it has disappointment, 3D printing, PCB design and manufacturing, soldering, desoldering. This is Project Lightning. Let's get started by taking a look at the Bolt EV's doors and all the electronics that goes on inside them. Right here is the passenger door of the Chevy Bolt EV. And this has been removed from the door itself, so it's just the panel. Um, so I've opened this all up to, to harvest all the electronics out of it. And the first thing I'm grabbing is this. So this is in the, the armrest here. There's a little button that lets you uh, roll the window up and down. If I pull this little button and controller out, and then I split this case in half, you can see that this button just uh, presses these little white tabs here, and those white tabs interface with this little membrane uh, right here. And under this membrane is just a little membrane switch here. This little tiny board is really all that I need to be able to harvest uh, out of the electronics out of the little door switch here. And this actually contains that little chip there, this big block, which I'm pretty sure this is the motor H bridge, basically the motor controller that rolls the window up and down. So this is what the inside of the passenger door looks like. Uh, right here is the window motor. So this motor, it just has two little wires that go into it. And this basically, if it spins one way, it rolls the window up, spins the other way, rolls the window down. And then continuing on the harness, uh, I've got this connector right here, which plugs into a large box that you can't see, <laughs> but it's, it's on the inside there. And it handles locking, unlocking the door, sensing if the door is currently closed. So there's quite a lot of functionality happening uh, in this one area. It's pretty complicated and the wiring harnesses are a little bit difficult to trace. It's also completely different than what happens on the driver door, but this is the more simplified version. So on this side, I need the door locks. I don't need the door button. I need the door window driver, but I'm actually gonna use the door window motor in the DeLorean because obviously the glass opens you know, a different amount um, in the DeLorean. I won't need the speaker and I won't need the little lock unlock button, but I will need this. I will also need something similar to the side mirror controls, except that is also gonna go and use the DeLorean's system. I'm now going to pull all of this out of here and then trim off the parts that I don't need to make it more simple. This is the window motor out of the driver side. And the window motor on the passenger side is very simple. It's just got two wires in it and it hooks directly to the motor. But on the driver side, it's fancy. So it's got two big pins uh, for, for positive and negative, And then it's got a handful of pins there that basically tell the motor to go up and down and whether it's an express mode and uh, some other things. So I don't want to keep this because <laughs> I have my own motors on the inside of the DeLorean doors. So I need to rip this apart and get it so it's just the circuit board and it's going to have like a driver board on it as well. But I need those electronics so that I can hook it to my own motor. Uh, so I'm going to rip this apart and see what it looks like on the inside. I saw a funny quote on Reddit yesterday that said, the best thing about being an adult is being able to take things apart and not get in trouble for them. 
So what I've done is I've taken these apart and uh, this was just three screws and it's just a, an electric motor and it's got a worm drive on it and that's all it does. No sensors or anything. You can see the, the worm gear down there maybe. And then this part pops out. There's your connector piece and then the electronics board. And that white box there is the power driver or something along those lines. And there is a small little processing board on there as well. This came apart very simply. It's gonna work out great. Well, I apologize for the poor lighting and poor angle <laughs> that I'm trying to work with here, but I'm working on the inside of the driver door. And you know, one of the problems working on a 40 year old car is that you have to deal with all of the things the previous owners have done. And so when you open up the door, you know, you start finding things that are not stock and weren't done particularly well. And so you just kind of have to deal with them. Um, it's part of restoring old vehicles. So on this side here, um, this is some sort of splice connectors that were put in here. I hate spade connectors like this. They, they just never stay in. And so that's why uh, this person has wrapped this in electrical tape which now that electrical tape is pretty much falling apart. Um, so I'm gonna rip all that out. Oh, do you see this right there? This is like, okay, so they went to Home Depot and they got a little metal bracket and that's what they're using to strap down the window motor. Yeah, so this is the window motor. This appears to be an upgraded version though. Normally these are plastic and then I see that the tube, I don't know if you can tell, but that is a metal tube back here that, the, uh, that, that runs through. Normally, there's a, an actuator right here, a solenoid, and it actuates this, which is the lock system. So uh, here's the lock. When you hit this, it's supposed to lock and unlock. Uh, so I'll be putting a new um, actuator here rather than a solenoid, and that will make it so that I can lock and unlock the door uh, from the bolts system. There is also, uh, here's how you open the door, right? And I am going to add a little special feature to add door poppers. So I'm gonna be drilling a little hole here, and then I'll put an actuator in this area with a rod so that I can do this uh, remotely and it will pop the doors. Um, but yeah, so there's gonna be some work <laughs> to get this. Uh, and I'm also gonna go through and test uh, the wires. I'll test all the components individually. I can just disconnect this and then hook up like a nine volt battery to it. That's the easiest way to do it or a small 12 volt battery and make sure that all the lights work, make sure that the window rolls up and down. Uh, this system here connects to this guy and this is how the side mirrors move. Um, so I'll test all that. Um, but yeah, I need to test everything before I try and put it all back together because as I said, this is a very awkward position. I've got like a bungee cord holding the door down this far and I could probably go a little bit further to make it more comfortable. But yeah, it's not a super fun situation trying to deal with all this mess while it's propped up in the air. Well, I've just hit a snag. In the DeLorean behind here, we've got these connectors okay and these connectors uh each one of them there's one on each side of the car hopefully that's in frame um there's nine pins on each one of those and then those pins snake up through the headliner and then down the doors into the, uh, the door panel using my multimeter to trace those wires so it goes off whenever you touch something grounded and because the the entire car <laughs> is grounded and connected together, uh, there's a ground path there. That totally makes sense. The problem is this, these two wires here. Yeah, so this one doesn't, but this one does. This purple wire. Yeah, that's like a plus 12 volt <laughs> wire. Uh, so basically what that tells me is that somewhere along the path down the door, up here, there is a break in the insulation. So it's shorting and that sucks because uh, I have to trace that entire wire. And I'm hoping that I can get into the roof box and hopefully it's in the roof box and not somewhere else. But otherwise I might have to pull this entire wire out, which is just a giant pain. I'm not even sure if I can do it. Yeah, okay, well, that sucks, and that's a setback, but I gotta fix it. Okay, so I've got the T-panel off. I've got it uh, 
sitting under there. The panel comes off pretty easily. There's just three screws on either side here, and then um, double-sided tape actually keeps the bulk of it down here in the front. It also kind of lips under this uh, front part. Uh, and then I've also removed this little cover panel. I thought that it was supposed to be screwed down, um, but in my case, it was just, um, just kind of, you know, RTV'd into place. Um, so now all of the wires are in here. I'm gonna see if I can pull the purple one uh, and do some continuity tests and see some of these connectors in here just to make sure. I would much prefer if the break in this wire was in the inside, like this direction, versus actually going out the doors. So I'll give it a shot. All right, so just like before, I've got this set up to, to test for grounds. Um, what I have done is uh, I decided to start on this side. I disconnected um, the wires that are heading down into this door, and I picked the ones that have the purple line right here. So this purple wire is the one that I was noticing um, was shorted to ground. And uh, now that this is disconnected, I can see that it is this wire that is shorted to ground. Um, and I can test on this side and it does not, uh, does not signal. Um, interestingly though, there's another purple wire here. So there's a purple and then a purple with pink and both of them are actually going off, which is kind of interesting. So these two wires here control the courtesy lights, or actually, I think that's what they're called. Maybe they're not called courtesy lights. Um, they're the lights that are on the edges of the door. There's a rear one that's kind of like a brake light, and then there's two over here. Um, and those, I think, um, are shorted somehow. But so basically what I have found out is somewhere this short is happening from here into the door or in the door itself. Uh, so now I'm gonna continue the process of debugging it. All right, it's like just a couple minutes later. This was actually fairly easy to track down, uh, at least as far as I have. So what I've got here is, um, uh, I've got it hooked up so the, the ground wire is connected to just like the metal here of the door. And then on this other side, I'm going to, um, I'll just touch it for right now over here. And so the way that you do this is you hook it up and I'm using a little alligator clips and I've clipped it to the wire on this connector. Um, and so this should not have any continuity. And so clearly it does. And then what I did was I started just shaking it, <laughs> and moving things around. As I move these wires here, it loses continuity and then goes back to having continuity. But I found that this wire that goes back behind the, the door uh, window motor, it's stuck and I can't move it out of there. So like this is supposed to be able to be kind of free and I should be able to move it um, and move this wire out from behind there and I can't. I think what I'm gonna find when I unscrew this and start removing this little guy is that they put a screw uh, through it or they pinched the wire like between two pieces of metal. So like the outer door skin is pinching on it. And so that's why both sides of this are uh, having an intermittent failure. Okay, I've just removed the bolt that was running through here. And so this is now looking like it's free. <laughs> Look at that. See how squished that is? Look at that. Totally squished. Both wires are exposed. And I'm sure this is the cause of our fault. Next up on the wiring issues is I'm working on the wires that control the motor, um, the window motor to roll it up and down. I found that one of the wires doesn't work. And I was, again, getting some really odd results out of it. Uh, so I, again, went and disconnected this side uh, because this particular, each window motor is separate, right? So um, I had to disconnect this side and I went and did some continuity tests and it is hooked up right now. And as you can see, there's no continuity between that wire and over here. And uh, then I went and I opened and closed the door and I got some odd results. Right here is where the wires come out from the roof box. I can move this. Oh. 
And by moving this area or putting pressure on it, I can get that connection to come back and go away intermittently. So, yeah, so basically, turn that off. Uh, so that sucks. So I need to remove this and see if I can repair the break that is happening inside this little area. All right, so I am pretty mad right now. I'm incredibly frustrated actually because I can't repair this wire while it's in the car. Now, so first, now that I've messed with it and you know moved it around, um, there's no connection anymore uh, at all. And so yeah, that wire is just broken somewhere in this region. I can't get these wires to come out of here. And up in this area, the wire is wrapped in tape. So the first thought I was having was what I wanna do is I'm gonna unpin that one wire and just pull on it, cause here it is, and it has no movement whatsoever. So I can't pull it out because it's completely wrapped in this, this tunnel, so you can't remove it. Now I have one option left, which is I need to depin every one of the wires because you can't leave the connectors on there, they won't fit. And if I'm lucky, I'll be able to take this rubber piece and pull it out through this little hole. And if I can do that, maybe, then I can pull the entire bundle out, then I can maybe repair it and then run it back through. And if I can't do that, I have to take the door off. And in most cars, that's not that huge of a deal, but in a DeLorean, it really sucks. All right, I was able to do this and get it to come out. And all of the wires, these were actually very easy to unpin. Um, so where's the wire that I need? Uh, it should be a gray wire with the red stripe. Well, All right, well, that explains why that was not working. Also, if you're like me and you were thinking, oh, it'll be accessible on the inside, it is not. So this is like a clamshell internally, so you can't like reach down. There's just you know, a piece of metal there, so I can't get to it, if you're curious. I have removed this little plate, and this little plate is what keeps this plastic liner in place. It might let me actually pull the wiring harness through. There's a tiny percent chance that I could maybe get enough space in there to splice this back. Uh, here's the wire, let me zoom in. All right, so I don't, I think that's gonna show up on camera, but the, the story has been told for me. All of these wires have cracks in them. Ooh, 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 look at this one. Yeah, that's like completely gone. Well. I guess this is good that I detected this now rather than later. Oh man. So I think, oh, okay, I'll be right back. So right here in the middle, this is the driver's side door harness. Uh, and then I constructed this one. So this is going to be going in the driver's side door. I've nicely wrapped it. It looks so nice. And then here's what it looks like. This is the passenger side. So yeah, obviously, if, if you know me, if you've been watching the channel uh, for any amount of time, you know that if I'm gonna do something once, might as well do it twice. Uh, so this is the wire harness for the passenger side there. Well, it's taken me about a week, but I'm finally back to where I was. So I have uh, replaced these. Sorry if you can't quite see that right there, um, but those are new screws. I couldn't use rivets because I can't get a rivet gun in this tiny little space here. If you can see like how tight it is, it's tiny. And then I've also done the exact same thing on this side. So basically everything is now back to good with the harnesses in place and then coming out there I just wrapped up the hood box rewire job. So we have two plugs going to the passenger side, two plugs going to the driver's side. 
I use the multimeter. Everything is buzzed out, at least between the side over here and up here. So everything now should be good uh, throughout the car. Whew. Um, here's all of the old connectors. These are all removed. All the new stuff is here with all the pins neatly labeled. Oh man, I am so glad to be done with this. Uh, so now I think I'm back to where I was over a week ago. <laughs> Uh, so now what I'm going to do is jump in the car and see if I can test all the windows and locks and the mirrors and everything else. So that's what I'm going to do now. We'll see how that goes. All right, just doing some initial testing on this side of the door. Um, I've got my hot wire right here. So this just runs over to one of the fuses for the window motors. And uh, so the window is currently down right here. And then I've hooked up the window motor and I put some little... Uh, pins off of it and I've got the uh, ground clipped to that one and I'm going to clip this to the red or actually I'm just going to touch it you can see and there you go so the window rolls up uh, it is a bit off of its track here I think there's supposed to be a little spacer to keep this in line so it falls out uh, but so that one works and then if I grab this and hook it there and then touch this to this one you see that it rolls down yeah, so that motor is working good. Um, all I need to do now is hook it up for real. And that way I can test the full wiring harness. But yeah, that motor works. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Well, it took me forever. Uh, of course, I spent about five hours just getting this window adjusted. It was popping off the rails. Um, I ended up having to take these brackets off. I painted them. They were covered in rust on the backside especially and I remounted uh, the motor there um, yeah and so I'm also replacing every one of the the screws here they were Phillips head before uh, and so I removed all of the bolts I chased them all with a tap uh, to clean them up and then I put new stainless steel hardware in place there uh, so hopefully those will last a long time I Okay, so this is working now, uh, at least everything that I can test. I've been at it a little while and made some progress here. One of the next things up that I'm working on is the uh, door lock actuators. So I custom designed this bracket and 3D printed it. Uh, currently it's in PLA, but I'll be redoing that out of ABS or maybe some other material um, that's a little more heat resistant. Um, I've, uh, this is all, seems to be working quite well. Um, I did the adjustment procedure for the door locks uh, and all seems well there, uh, at least on all of these ones. I, I don't have the last one going to the front yet. Um, I also tested this lock actuator and cut the ends off now, so I am prepared to make the little connection piece uh, that will connect these up so that uh, the central locking feature should be able to be working at that point. Uh, I also tried to clean up this bracket piece here. It was real rough, so I got all of the rust off of it, and when I go and put everything back together, I'll give this a coat of spray paint. I, I didn't want to put it on just quite yet because I'm still testing it. So I'm continuing on now. Um, the next thing on the list is this special little guy, which is going to be a door popper. Uh, and that's going to be the mechanism that allows the door latch to open uh, remotely so that the doors will swing open, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, I made a 3D printed template and put that there. And then I also have some 3D printed pieces. This will go on the back side of it like this, and then some nuts uh, get pressed in here, uh, similarly to how they're done on the door lock actuator. And so that will go on the other side of the actuator here. And then there's a little bit of a spacer that I made because this metal piece has a bit of a lip that's pressed in here. And so in order for the popper mechanism to clear, uh, it needs to be pressed out just a little bit. And then that is going to press on a rod that goes over here and goes to this guy. So I'm going to put a little hole right there, and then there will be a, a rod that connects the two. So this way, when I activate the actuator in here, it will pull this back and that will unlatch the door and it will pop open. Well, I'm holding here in my hand the side view mirror from the DeLorean. And that is because I'm working on making the side view mirrors um, work. These have power mirrors. 
and everything is going wrong <laughs> and nothing works. All right, so the first thing that happened when I was trying to get this stuff to work is that uh, I knew that when I had tried to use the power mirrors like four years ago, like when I actually just got the car, that they didn't work. But it had been so long ago that I couldn't really remember what wasn't working about it. So the first thing I did was I tested it. Um, on either side, I cut the wires uh, to the motors and then I ran them um, because you can just apply voltage to them and move the motors. And it worked on the passenger side, but it didn't work on the driver side. And I have come to find out that that is because the motor inside of the side view mirror is broken. There is no continuity on the motor that controls up and down. And then on the motor that controls left and right, it's real crusty. Uh, and then similarly on the passenger side, both up and down and left and right, super, super crusty. Uh, and I also found out that my little uh, button here for controlling the motors, it's got a broken wire on it, which I could fix that. Um, but it also feels pretty terrible. Um, it's just like it, you, it barely moves when you press the buttons. It just feels totally gross compared to what you find in a modern car. So because of that, I've gone down a rabbit hole. <laughs> the while you're in there kind of thing. So this is going away. I have a new one coming in uh, and it will be here in about a week. If you take a look at the bottom of it, you'll notice that it's super rusty up inside of it. The DeLorean is supposed to have folding mirrors. They're not power folding, but you're supposed to be able to actually move the mirror. And these both sides are just completely rusted stuck. And when I opened it up, it's just complete rust on the inside. So I know that both sides are just kind of eh. So I've got both sides on the way now and they're gonna be here soon. Unfortunately, this is what it is like working on a 40 year old car. I also decided while I'm in there, uh, I'm going to put some new mirror glass on each side. And yes, I'm replacing brand new glass. I'm replacing the mirror with a convex mirror. And a convex mirror gives you a wider field of view. And in the DeLorean, the field of view out of the side mirrors is really terrible stock. So a lot of people do this upgrade. And I also figured well, while I'm in there, since I have all of the wiring harness run for heated side mirrors, I'm gonna go ahead and install that too. So here in about a week, my time, I will have new side mirrors, new side mirror glass, and new side mirror heating elements. But that's not all. Since the controller uh, for moving the power windows is so crusty and terrible, and that's probably just because it's old, I also uh, am doing another upgrade that I've seen some people do, which is to replace the switch with a modern switch. I searched around through some forums uh, and I actually found that it's a fairly common thing uh, because these window switches are pretty expensive and very finicky and they just don't really work very well for people um, to replace them with an aftermarket one from a wide variety of vehicles, including a Saturn, a Saab, and a bunch of other things. And I found this mirror switch that looks very similar to the other ones that I've seen online that people use. And it's for like a Buick Terrazzo or something like that. And the reason I picked that one is because I was able to get the wiring harness uh, from the door so that I had the connector, which was very difficult to find otherwise. The other reason I went with this is because I was able to find a wiring diagram and a pinout for the switch. With this, I was able to label all of the pins and connect them into a harness connector that I can swap out really, really easily. Uh, and lastly, there's a feature here, the instrument panel lamp supply voltage. Ah, yes, lamp. And that is because some of these switches have an LED light in them, so they are LED backlit. And since the Chevy Bolt has that feature, I'm gonna go ahead and install it here as well. So. Uh, in addition to the one from the Buick Terrazzo, I also picked up another copy of that switch. This is just a brand new replacement version of it, but this one has the LEDs, whereas the one from the Buick don't. I'm starting the process by disassembling the new side mirrors. Removing the old glass with a heat gun and a small pry bar took about five minutes per side. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the heated mirror upgrade. 
Uh, what I've got here is this is the convex mirror and I'm gonna try and not shine it into your face. <laughs> so this mirror normally sits like this uh, inside of the side view mirror, you know, assembly itself. So I'm gonna do that um, shiny side down even though both sides are actually shiny. And then this is the plastic uh, sort of holder piece that goes there. So then this whole thing is normally uh, mounted into the side mirror, right? So I picked up these uh, little heater pads off of eBay and you can cut these things, uh, including over the marks here. That should be totally fine. Um, and so that's what this is. I've cut it down to size, okay? Um, so it will go like this. So that's the idea. I'm going to drill two extra little holes right there that I've marked based on the position of those little pins. So I'm gonna drill those holes, put this here. This is going to be sandwiched on the mirror right? And this side uh, has a sticky backing on it. So it's going to sticky back to the glass. And then I'm going to use some VHB tape, which I've got here. So this is some really strong double-sided tape. So then I'll, I'll press all those together and that will give me a nice uh, heated mirror sandwich, which will then get reinstalled back into the mirror assembly. So here's something that you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, you can see I've got it hooked up here to this. Uh, well, actually, let me turn the power output on. Uh, you can see that that is only drawing 28 milliamps. <laughs> so that is a very, very small amount of electricity. And it is because, um, if you notice this main trace, it was cut. And the reason it was cut is because I went, um, I, I tried to do the, uh, the sandwich method that I, <laughs> that I had come up with. And when I put it on, it just didn't go on straight. And so because it didn't go on straight, you'll notice that I've got a lot of extra space um, around this main heating element versus on this side. I mean, it's just completely cut all the way through. So basically none of this part of the heating element is doing anything because it's disconnected right there. And so because of that, the result is that it doesn't pull any amps. Uh, there's no current uh, or very little current. Uh, versus this one, I, I'm doing it a different way. Uh, what I did was I took the pad and I cut it at these lines for them. So I'm just keeping the main heating element and everything else I just cut away. And so I'm going to stick this down uh, here and I'm going to use some tape to tape it down. That way it stays aligned. And then once I do this, I will flip it over and use the little um, guy here to mark out the holes and cut them. So I'm basically working a little bit backwards from what I had originally attempted. Um, also, I tried to move this once I had it in place in this sticky tape on here. Well, good news, it sticks real well. There was no getting this off. Um, I've basically almost like you have to basically destroy it to get it off. And I've been working at this for, for a while. Um, it sticks really, really well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to order another one of these. Luckily, they are very, very cheap. Um, and then I'll do it just like I'm doing this one over here and hopefully that works out better. Um, let me just to show you real quick. So like that was drawing 0.2 amps or something like that. Um, if I hook this up, I believe last time it was about 0.45 amps. So yeah, that's like literally 50 times as much current. No, 20 times as much current. Uh, and so 20 times as much current means when I put my, like I can literally feel it getting warm. This never gets warm at all, uh, but this one is already just feels just like a nice little warmth. Not hot for sure, um, but just certainly enough to melt the snow or whatever's on there. Assembling the side mirror is straightforward. I run two additional wires alongside the existing control wires. Then I mark and drill holes through the mounting plate to align with the pins on the heating pad. Run the wires through those holes and screw the mount into place. Then I cover the mount with VHB tape so the mirror can be mounted to it. All right, passenger side's all wrapped up. Hello. Uh, I've got the connector here ready to go. It's all labeled and pinned out. And of course, I realized after I did this that I'm going to have to take the connector off <laughs> in order to run it through the side of the car. But uh, it's all ready to go, so that's great. As soon as I get the heating element for the other one, I'll be able to install it as well. All right, I'm just doing some testing here. And I have the power mirrors all hooked up. I've got the power mirrors hooked up here. So I can move these. So I'm going to select the driver side first. And then all you can see, uh, since I don't have the mirror installed there, 
It's just that little nub. So I'm gonna go up and down, left and right. And then let me, uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it too much on camera there, but there we go. Yeah, you can, you can tell if that's moving. Look at that. Perfect. Uh, and each one of the controls like left does properly go left and all that stuff. Uh, initially they were swapped around a little bit. Uh, I don't know if this switch is just slightly different than the, uh, the schematic that I found, but yeah, left and right were, were switched. Um, but after swapping those, everything worked great. Well, I'm back under the dashboard again, uh, hopefully for the last time in quite a while. For all the functionality that I'm trying to get working in the doors, a lot of those end up connecting back here to the body control module. And so, um, yeah, everything, every wire that is going to be up and over here uh, is now run. Um, I also did get this plugged in. This is the door ajar sensor. And previously the DeLorean needed two because there were two different circuits. Uh, using you know, 1980s electronics technology. But uh, these days we don't need to do that, so I've just got the one. Well, I've got two additional sections of wiring all wrapped up. Uh, firstly, let's start with all of our switches here in the middle of the center console. Uh, right now I've got these four switches. Uh, I don't have a use yet for the fifth switch, so that one's gonna be a dummy spot over there. Uh, on the left side, this is gonna be for our door popper. Uh, it's got very simple wiring, basically just you know a single switch. So. Um, the yellow wire is trigger and then the ground wire. And so you basically just, you tap that and the doors are gonna pop open. Uh, next up is the driver side uh, power windows up and down there. And then this is the unlock and lock button. And then the passenger up and down switch. These are the switches that have LED backlighting. My yellow wire goes to the system that lets me turn the LEDs up or down in brightness. Um, and then they're automatically lit at night, for example. So that's what that yellow wire does. So I'm, I'm hoping that just works. <laughs> We're gonna find out because it's possible that it just won't work there. But yeah, this whole thing is like a nice little tidy wiring harness. Um, well, maybe not tidy, but you know, it, it's getting there. Um, I also wired this up. So there's one ground wire that splits to all of the switches and then similarly to the LED backlight and then similarly to the 12 volt, like the red wire there. Um, and that's so that if I want to go back here and rewire anything or change it up or whatnot, like I've just got all the wires, they're already prepped, they're already split, and they're ready to go just to make things a lot easier. So yeah, that'll be hooked up and tested shortly, which is great. Uh, and then next up is back here. Uh, these are the overhead lights uh, from the Bolt. The reason I plugged them in, because they're not really like strictly necessary, but it is going to help me test the door ajar functionality and the door locks and things like that because if you hit the unlock button the interior lights uh, should open up um, or certainly if you open the door and then i have uh, one section that the wiring is all uh, laid out so this is all of the wires for this side here this includes all of the uh, electrical relays and all that kind of stuff which are going to live back here in that spot plenty of room for it Okay, so I've just put power to the car and I'm gonna test out some of the things that I've got plugged in. So the first thing is in the back, all of those lights, they should come on when I lock and unlock the doors. Let's go ahead and hit this. Ah, oh, look at that. They also smoothly come on. I didn't even realize that that was a thing. But yeah, so those are turning on. I don't know if they'll turn off if I hit the off button. Yeah, they do. They nicely turn off. So my switch is here. They're all plugged in, but you can see that the, the LEDs aren't lighting up and I don't really know <laughs> if that's um, because the car's not on or because I just didn't do it right. Uh, so I'm going to hold the brake and then reach over here and hit the power button. Oh, look at that. Got those green lights. Um, so over here, uh, by the way, I put a piece of cloth over it so it thinks that it's nighttime. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to spin this, and this is how I can turn um, the, the lights on and off. If I could do this one-handed, it would be great. Oh, look at that, that actually does work. Fantastic. Okay, 
All right, so the next thing that actually is plugged in over here is that these lock and unlock buttons are plugged into the car. Um, so I don't know if they're actually going to do anything, but I can give it a shot. So let's hit the unlock button first. Okay, so I definitely heard a click. I heard a click. It doesn't, I don't know if it did anything though. Oh, so all I'm hearing is a, a relay inside of the body control module. And let's hit the down, the lock button. Yeah, similarly. So I hear a click, but uh, I can't really test if it's doing anything because the locks don't do anything. Now that I have some idea of how the electronics work in the Bolt and in the DeLorean, I need some way to make them work together. But it isn't as simple as just splicing the wires together because the Bolt and the DeLorean speak a different language. In the DeLorean, the power windows work without a single transistor, microcontroller, or relay. The motor that controls the window has two wires, and if you ground one side and give power to the other, it goes up. And if you swap the wires, it goes down. These two wires run all the way back to the window switch in the center console, which normally grounds both wires. Pressing the down button switches 12 volts to one of those wires, and the window rolls down. Pressing the up button switches 12 volts on the other wire and the window rolls up. The switches are switching between ground and 12 volts. In this type of circuit, the full power to run the windows goes through those switches. This can be 10 amps or more and can lead to them melting during use. However, in modern electronics, manufacturers switch signals using open and ground. Either the wire isn't connected or it's connected to ground. This avoids issues where various circuits are running on different voltages, and the switches are wired so that very little current runs through them. In the Chevy Bolt EV, the up and down buttons are simple contacts that are bridged and connect ground back to the microcontroller, which then flips a relay that switches power to the window motor. Since these two systems are essentially speaking a different language, I need some way to translate the DeLorean signals into the Bolt signals. And I can do that with a very simple relay circuit. Each button is wired to activate a relay, which is then either open or grounded, and the output connects to the Bolt's window button circuit. I used a program to design the schematic and laid it out onto a PCB. This same basic concept is also used to handle the door ajar sensors and control the lock actuators, which I have another PCB for. I had these boards manufactured and sent to me, and I soldered on all the components. To get these boards into the DeLorean, I designed mounting plates for each of the four circuit boards, 3D printing and test fitting each one, then combined those into an enclosure and added cutouts for connectors. This was then 3D printed. Uh, what I've done is I printed uh, a couple little nubs on to the end here, and then I made this mount, and the mount has little slots. That slot in there, and then the front wraps around, and then there's a little screw hole. So I can basically mount just this plate uh, somewhere in the car, and then when I'm ready to install the, the box, or if I need to take it out or whatever, I can just take it, slot it in, put one screw in, and call it good. Well, I'm just getting ready to do a little more testing with my little electronics box here. Uh, so everything is kind of screwed into place, at least temporarily. And then I've got most of the input wires coming in. So this side here is input. Um, all of these things come in, they're soldered to the boards below. Uh, some of it's connected, some of it's not. Um, this here is the driver board. And uh, so that's what I'm testing right now. So I'm basically confirming that my signals uh, that are coming in over here uh, we'll end up, you know, putting voltage on these output wires that go to the motors, uh, the, the window motors, that is. And then once I test the driver side, I will do the same thing on the passenger side. And um, so right now I'm just signaling these manually by just using a ground wire to touch them. Um, once I confirm that that works, and once I confirm that the relay boxes, um, the, not the top on the bottom relay box, once I confirm that that one is working, uh, I will bridge them together and then I should be able to test sort of end to end to make sure that the switches in the center console trigger the relay board, which then triggers the 
uh, board here, which then triggers the motors. <laughs> it's a bit of a complex process. Uh, getting turned around now, so I'm looking at the electronics behind the driver's side. Uh, what I'm working on now is testing the electronics box. Um, what I've got hooked up here, I've got a little test light. I have it connected to what I think is the motor up uh, wire. I don't know for sure because I just kind of randomly selected the wires uh, on the board there, um, but I'm gonna try that out. Now this small little wire right here that I have labeled as window up, it is the window up button that normally comes from another device. So I'm sure that that is the up, uh, but I don't know if the motor that I'm gonna touch right now is for up or for down. So I'm hitting up and I don't see a test light coming on, but I do hear the relay. So let's try to see if it's actually, trying not to short any of these pins out. So again, I think this one is up. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so now I know that my labeling there is backwards. So I'll switch those labels around and then I should have everything ready for me to actually plug this in to the actual like window motor. So let me do that real quick and then we'll give it a test. I'm gonna do the best I can to get this in frame here. Uh, so I've hooked up these wires uh, to the actual window and what I'm going to do is just kind of override the button here. So it's in the up position right now. I'm gonna hit the down position. And you'll notice it automatically turns itself off because there's a learn procedure that I need to do, but, but it does close and open. Wait, I, did, I said that backwards, but you, you saw it. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's great. Next up, I need to do the same for the passenger window. And then um, once these are working here, then I'm gonna hook up the buttons. Uh, this little relay here is amazing, uh, but unfortunately it is causing me some headaches. But the schematic software that I used, it displayed a couple of the pins on this relay as backwards. Uh, so each one of these little boxes contains two relays and um, every relay has a normally open side and a normally closed side. And on one of those relays, it was correct, but on the other one, it was incorrect. Basically, you plug this relay box in and it's always got one of the buttons pressed. I went and looked in the schematic and I found the error and now I have to fix this error. And to fix the error, I basically need to take off uh, the relays and I need to drill out a couple of pins, put some new jumper wires. It's gonna take some time and it's a bit frustrating and annoying that I have to do this, but hopefully it makes everything work after this. Okay, after fixing the relay board, uh, just the one for the windows right now, I'm back in the car. There's the buttons. I'm gonna go ahead and hit them here. And you can, uh, you can hear that it is shutting off automatically after a little bit. Um, I just need to do the relearning procedure, but it all works right here from the center. And then on the passenger side, look at that. I have not had mirrors that go up and down in this car. <laughs> like, I, I don't know that they ever worked, uh, at least not well. Oh, but look at that. Oh, fantastic. Next up on the list is to try and get door locks working. Uh, and so I'm trying to figure out exactly how this circuitry is supposed to work and um, just not really having any luck with it. Um, so I'm trying to use an oscilloscope. And so one of the learnings that I've had so far is that I've learned that I don't know how to use an oscilloscope. Yeah, I'm still not really sure what I'm seeing, but I have figured out how to get the oscilloscope to do what I would like it to do. Uh, yeah, so I've got three wires that I'm looking at here. One is an unlock wire. And then there are two lock wires. There's a lock wire for the driver's side and then a lock wire that's supposed to be for everything else, but in my case is just for the passenger side. And so interestingly, if I uh, use the 
multimeter to check the voltage here. I mean, it'll, it aligns with what the oscilloscope is saying, which is that there's basically like seven and a half volts just sitting on these wires all the time, all of them. And then if I take this uh, and I hit the unlock button, you can see that there's a little bit of a spike. And if I hit the um, lock button, there is kind of an opposite spike. And I can also double press it to get uh, a slightly different reaction. And that's because when you double tap the unlock button, it unlocks all doors versus just unlocking the driver door. And so I'm just trying to figure out why it does that. Like it's actually spiking up to 12 volts on some of them. And then other ones are being grounded. Uh, but in looking at the data sheet, that's not what it looks like. It's supposed to be happening. It looks like everything is supposed to be grounded and then switched to 12 volts. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and rely on the oscilloscope here. And then further than that, I'm just going to go ahead and wire it up to the lock and I'm going to see if it works there. Since I don't have my relay board reproduced uh, because of that error that it had, the unlock wire is hooked up exactly as it should be, but the passenger lock and driver lock are just jumpered uh, so that it's not going through the box. Uh, so I can test over here. Currently the door is unlocked because it's forward. If I hit the unlock button again, you see it kind of twitches a little bit. If I hit the lock button, it should lock this. There you go. And then if I hit the unlock button again, it should unlock. Yeah, and everything works great here. Similarly, on the passenger side, it's currently locked. If I hit the lock button again, you see it locks. If I hit the unlock button just once, nothing will happen over here because it only unlocks the driver side. So let me do that. You see nothing happens. If I hit it again, then it unlocks. Uh, I did have to go and readjust all the linkages and things to make this work right, uh, just because it's been a long time apparently since they had been adjusted, but everything is now working perfectly. And in fact, I believe these uh, buttons in the center should also work. Uh, so this uh, will unlock, which is already unlocked, and then this will lock. There you go. Uh, so I recently got in uh, my new replacement boards and I've got them uh, soldered up and tested. And uh, the problems with the board have been fixed, so that's good. Unfortunately, there's still some bad news. The bad news though is that the window motor for rolling up and down the driver side isn't working. The problem is that it just continually stops after about one second and I'm pretty sure I know what the issue is. And I think it's because I don't have this plugged in. This here is the actual window switch and it's how I do the passenger side. So unfortunately, I think I need to take this apart and put the board in the relay box. The board comes apart uh, just like the other window switch. Uh, it's got like a membrane pad on this side. So this is gonna get tossed. And then it's just got a bunch of switch pads because the uh, it has up and down for every window. Uh, plus it also has connections for the power mirrors, which I'm not using and I don't need those. Uh, so basically I need to do what I did on the other switch board, which is uh, get a couple of these pins into tiny little wires. And then those are going to be run from the window switch in the center console. All right, so here's what I've got. I took the board out on the side that has the buttons. I just soldered it directly onto the face of those buttons right there. And then I, I don't know how I got this lucky, but in the box, this is like the perfect width. It's, it's perfect. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, just so I don't have to make a whole new box and redesign everything, uh, I think I'm going to take the lid of the box and I'll 3D print a little standoff on that. So basically when I put the lid on, it will be attached to the top there. Um, but yeah, it's gonna fit perfectly in there. Yeah, it worked out. To support the electronics board that I've got here, I made a little mount onto the lid. This is on the inside of the lid and this just kind of sits in place there. I didn't need to resize anything. This is just happened to be perfect size uh, for this to go here. If I had to do it again, I think I would just use screw terminals on these connectors. I think that would just make it a lot easier. Uh, but for now, this works. Um, so I've got these hooked up here. Um, I've also made up the top board. So this is the one that handles all of the door ajar logic. So I've got all the pins here. I've got the connectors. These connectors don't quite go anywhere yet, but it's getting pretty close. Um, I've got this board mounted, and I've also added a special little switch here. 
This switch is going to be used um, to signal when the door lock actuator is, uh, is sort of being simulated. Uh, I can use this to reprogram keys for the car and things like that. So I decided it would look kind of cool to put it right there. So I'll be able to tap that and relearn additional keys. Here is the completed relay box. Look at this. That's pretty slick, right? Got the connectors on the front. You can see the little latch screwing onto the base plate here. Um, doesn't rattle. <laughs> Everything is held in there tightly. I've got the little push button on the front, which has a nice little clicky feel to it. So this is great. This is ready to get installed in the car. All right, let's do some tests now that the box is in place. Uh, window rolls up and down over here. I'm still having issues where it only goes down uh, an inch or so. Uh, I'm just need to, the calibration's not working for me for whatever reason, but that's working. I did test out the defrosting function, the heated side mirrors, and that actually does work. You can feel the heat coming off of it, which is great. Uh, but what I really wanted to try out was the door poppers. Uh, so let's see what happens. Oh, that one did it. This one got caught. All right, second attempt did it. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of mechanical work necessary to like make sure that the doors are um, just perfectly lubricated and with the correct amount of, uh, of force. But yeah, that was fantastic. That's just, oh, uh, I cannot wait to have this all working. While I've got the door open here, uh, I'm going to use my foot. Uh, well, so first, I can use this to close the door. So if you look right there on the thing, when I hit this with my foot, it opens and closes. So the door ajar sensor is working. And then similarly, you can see that light. And when I hit my foot, I can turn the light on and off. So that is also working. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, door poppers. Ah! As you can see, the doors are both back together now. Got all the trim pieces. Got the switch for the power mirrors there. Looking good. The T-panel is now back on. I also went and replaced the door struts in here with some new ones as well. So hopefully those give it a little bit more power. You can also see that when I opened the door, the lights automatically came on because it now believes that the door is open. Okay, I've just finished up and got working the last feature of the relay box in the back. What it does is disable the ability to lock the car in certain situations. So if I have here my key fob and I hit the unlock button, uh, both doors are currently open. You will hear those relays click. And that's because you always wanna be able to unlock the car. Um, but these doors have a particular uh, nuance where if you lock them while they are open and then you close them, it actually will potentially damage the little latch pin here because the lock uh, is just not expected to be locked while the door is open. Um, this door clearly had that happen to it a number of times. There's some dings and dents on, on this edge of it over here, but it also moved the door hinge in, it moved the pin over and it made it so the door didn't close quite right. So what I've done is I have, uh, in the relay box, made it so when the door is open, which is that little pin there, it will not lock. And so I hit the lock button, nothing happens. So let me grab the door. So now with the door closed, if I hit the lock button, 
you will see it locks. So that is great. You can also see that this is all trimmed out here. Everything is put back together. Um, I can also, you know, physically lock and unlock it here. And when it is unlocked, I can open the door. With the door closed, I can also hit the door popper over here. And the door opens. I am so happy that the car now has power windows, power mirrors, heated mirrors, remote controlled electric door locks, and the car is a much better daily driver now. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be working on next on the car, but I am gonna take a little break from the car, and I've got two projects that are coming up that you won't want to miss. So please, if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, write a comment, hit a like, anything you can do really helps the algorithm. This is Project Lightning.